Hi, I'm Marianne Scott of the Humanities Council of Washington, D.C. And the Humanities Council has put together this video and resources on our website to help you explore the history of your D.C. home. It's easy to trace the basic history of your house. All you need is a street address, a few hours of research time, and your curiosity. So let's walk through the steps for creating a basic history for your D.C. home. Here are three basic areas to explore when starting out on your D.C. house history. When was my D.C. house built? Who has lived in my D.C. house before me? What was the neighborhood like when my house was built? And how has my neighborhood changed? So let's get started. When assembling your house history, a great place to begin is with the evidence all around you. I'm someone who's always been fascinated by history, but I honestly never thought there could be so much history here in my house. This project has shown me that there's been all these amazing stories that have taken place right here in this house over the years. You know, I, I would recommend anyway, take the time, do a house history project, find out the story of your house. Once you've collected evidence from your neighbors and from your house, you can take your research the next step with a visit to some DC libraries. We'll introduce you to two great DC libraries. The D.C. Public Library's Washingtoniana Division, located downtown at the Martin Luther King Jr. Library. The Historical Society of Washington, D.C.'s Kiplinger Research Library. Let's start with the first question. When was my D.C. house built? Hi, may I help you? Hi, um, I'm interested in doing a house history. Do you have the um, square and lot number of your house? I do not. Okay, we can look that up on the tax assessment database. Great. The square is the city block on which you live. The lot is the property on which your house sits. Okay, here's the information with the uh, square and lot number, and that can take us right over to the microphone now. Now that James has identified the age of his house and some information about the circumstances of its construction, a next step is to start identifying its previous residents. So let's turn to our second question. Who has lived in my DC house? One good way to identify previous residents of your DC house is by using city directories, available on microfilm at the Washingtoniana Division. Directories of DC residents have been published since the 1820s. Initially, they served much the same purpose as later telephone books. Starting in 1914, the directories included not only an alphabetical listing of residents' names, but also a listing by street and street number of all DC buildings and who was occupying them. James can use the city directories to trace the residents of his house from 1914 all the way to the present. Let's turn to the third of our basic house history questions. What was the neighborhood like when my house was built, and how has the neighborhood changed over time? For this part of the research, James went to the Kiplinger Research Library at the Historical Society of Washington. The Historical Society is located on Mount Vernon Square in Northwest. The Kiplinger Research Library houses many of the same research resources that are available at the Washingtoniana Division, as well as additional unique research materials dealing with Thank Washington you. history. I'm Yvonne Kerrigan. Library Director Yvonne Kerrigan and her staff are knowledgeable about DC neighborhood and house histories and it can help you use Kiplinger Research Library resources to explore the history of your neighborhood and your home. A good place to start researching the neighborhood context of your DC house is with published sources. Check out the bibliography of sources on the House History page of the Humanities Council website and ask your librarian about what other sources relevant to your neighborhood are available. Historical maps provide an excellent resource for exploring the neighborhood context of your D.C. house history. City street maps are available from the 1850s on and provide an easy way to trace how and when your neighborhood was developed. Once you've looked at published sources and historical maps, it's time to explore the neighborhood context of your home. Don't neglect photographic and other kinds of images when exploring the neighborhood context of your D.C. home's history. 
The Washingtoniana Division houses important collections of DC images, including the photo morgue of the Washington Evening Star. The Kiplinger Research Library includes more than 100,000 DC images in its collections. Okay, to summarize. When researching the history of your DC home, first, explore the evidence around you. Your neighbors, the streetscape of your block, clues from your home's interior. Second, make use of the research tools in DC libraries to identify the square and lot number of your home, when your home was built, and by whom. Third, explore past residents of your house. You can identify past residents using city directories, census records. You can then explore previous residents in depth using the range of available directories and newspapers. And don't forget to Google. Fourth, Investigate the neighborhood context of your DC home using published sources, historical maps, and expand your neighborhood research using local library vertical files and newspaper listings. So what's the history of your DC home? I'm uh, Rahul Amin Kwander, and I'm a board member of the Humanities Council of Washington, DC. And this house is an old house. It's in the Brooklyn section of Washington, DC, and it was built between 1905 in 1906. It's a very sturdy house in a very sturdy neighborhood and we very much love this whole section of Washington. It's a very historic section of the city. The historic Brooklyn area, a lot of professors from Howard University used to have summer homes over this way and a lot of them lived closer to campus and they would come here in the summer and to catch the breeze, the houses are further apart, the trees, etc. So in the history we've had uh, Professor Charles Lofton, we had Robert C. Weaver, the first African-American cabinet member, grew up right up the street. Uh, Ralph Bunch lived just a couple of blocks from here. Pearl Bailey, when she was a student at Howard, just lived around the corner. So we've had a very long and stellar history of some outstanding people. Several people lived in this home if it's 100, 105 or more years old. Um, we purchased it from a man whose name is Major Hinton in 1975, and we've been here before that, uh, since then. Now before that, there were several other people, Parkers and the Gerlock family. The Gerlock showed up one day, knocked on the door, and said, this is our family home from the 40s and 50s. And when we looked at some records, we found out that their ownership goes back all the way into the 20s. You're here in the uh, Quantitore uh, Gallery. My wife is a professional artist trained in New York. She's a native Washingtonian. And she has done just about all of these paintings that have been displayed at various art galleries. In addition to being a painter, she also teaches. And we just returned from Russia where she was invited by the Academy of Fine Arts this past summer to paint in St. Petersburg. So we had a very good experience there and she continues to, to produce work on a regular basis. Now this particular house that we're in is a, is a party house. It's a gallery on the first floor uh, you see all these beautiful paintings that uh, we brought back from around the world or she's done herself and Going on into the back. We put an addition on the house in the 80s and we have sh art showings here and art related activities and People who are interested in purchasing work. They may come and schedule an appointment to come by and see some of her works so we use the entire first floor for business and entertainment as well as residency so it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun, there's never a dull moment, and you see art is just a part of our lives. So when I joined the Humanities Council, I guess in a way it was a perfect fit, because I was part of the local art scene anyway, and, and the Humanities Council has just enhanced that and given me greater diversity, and I'm delighted that she is so talented to be a part of that.